Pandas, known for their excellent camouflaging skills, ability to climb even the tallest trees. Whoa, cut, cut, cut. We are not here to talk about those kind of pandas. We are here to talk about the data analysis library pandas in the Python programming language. We can use pandas to do data cleansing, data analysis, and data transformations. You can think of pandas as a collection of Power Query, pivot tables, and formulas in Excel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we can use pandas in a real world situation. Recently, I was doing a training program for one of the largest hotel chains in the world and they showed me this sample data that they get for the hotel bookings and it had some really weird issues. So we are gonna use pandas to load up the data, cleanse it and do some quick analysis. Let's get into Python. For this example, we will use the hotel booking data.txt file like you can see here, we have got some columns and some rows of data, but in between some text values are there, which kind of make it hard for us to combine everything and analyze it together. So let's understand how we can kind of load this data into pandas and then how we can clean it up, how we can understand this data. To get started, either open a new tab or new window and then choose open a different editor option and then select Jupyter Notebook. This way you can do the interactive notebook style programming within VS Code directly. This is very simple. All we have to do is write some code, execute it to see the results and then add comments or documentation along way. So most of the time in the world of data analytics and data science, people use interactive notebook style programming when building or developing the understanding. Once things are working as intended, then you might have just one Python code rather than the interactive notebook style things, but this is a fairly common format. So you have either a code block or a markdown block. Code is where your code goes and markdown is where you could write some documentation or explanation of what is happening. So the very first thing that we want to do is import the libraries that we will need to work with this data. So we start with import pandas as PD. Of course, you can call this as anything. For example, you can call it DC, but it's a convention to just use PD there. Another package that we normally use when we are analyzing data is the NMP or NMPy package. So import as NP. And that's pretty much it. When you run this, those packages will be imported into your workspace uh, and now it's ready. So at this point, we can add a markdown block just to say, uh, let's load up the hotel booking data. And then we will add a code block here. In this code block, let's just load it up. Pandas uses a type of data structure called data frame. We can think of data frame as Excel's range or Excel's tables. It's basically a tabular structure where your data is maintained, but the data frames are a bit more flexible and optimize it for performance. So we can declare a variable df is equal to, and then pd.read. And when you see the read, you have see that, you can see that, you know, there's lots of different functions that we can use. I'm gonna use the read CSV. Even though our file is a text file, we can read it as a CSV because it's a tab delimited file. So I'm just gonna say the file path because it's in the same folder as our rest of the workbook. We can simply say hotel booking data .txt and load it up. And then in the next line, I'm just gonna print df.head. This will just print the first few rows for me. And let's run this and we get this. Now I thought we are gonna get four different columns, but here you could clearly see that everything is read up as a single row with the backslash T as the separator. This is a problem because we don't want this to be treated as one of the characters. It should be treated as a separator. So here I can use an extra parameter called dailym and then like that. Let's try again. And now our data frame looks so much better with four columns uh, and the first five rows are printed here um, with the information. This looks great, but as you can see here, we have got NAN wherever that text value is. 
I'm just going to quickly keep our hotel booking data here so you can see that this is what is happening. In between, we have got these things which has only the text value and nothing else. And that is what really causes the problem. Pandas offers many different functions and operations on the data using which you can kind of deal with these kind of scenarios. We will deal with this in a minute, but first let's understand what else can be done here on the data. So for example, if I want to understand what is in my data, I can use uh, df.describe, which will basically does some description of the data. It will generate uh, some counts and other things on the usually the number columns. So it will give you room number because room number is the only number column. It will do uh, the analysis. There's 153 records there. Uh, the mean is this, standard deviation is that, etc. Of course, some of these statistics have no meaning because we can't really add up or average room numbers, but that's what describe does. So if you have got multiple columns where this kind of analysis can be done, uh, the describe will go and add all of those columns here for you. Let's add one more piece of code uh, and then let's just see df. Uh, and you can use the square bracket and then kind of select uh, a field from your data. So company is one of the columns. So we can say df.company and then you can use the value counts option, which will basically tell you how many items are there. So for example, uh, Leakso company made three bookings, five chat company made three bookings and uh, Twitter works company made only one booking. Just a reminder here, this data is all randomly made up but uh, that's uh, really what value counts does. One way to think about value counts is it's kind of like a basic pivot table uh, where we are taking each unique value in the company column and then telling you how many counts are there. Again, feel free to go ahead and experiment with this. Most of this is especially with the interactive style of programming that we are doing here where you write a line of code and then run this and see the results. It's really easy to experiment and try out different things and work on it. All right, so now let's go ahead and fix the problem with our data, which is we have got these uh, text values that are kind of breaking the pattern. So one solution for this problem is we don't want any of this itself. And here we can just use the df.dropNA and, and then you can kind of specify how you want to do it. There are multiple parameters for many of these functions. And as I'm still learning uh, pandas, I myself have no idea what other things are possible. So normally this is what I have been doing all this while when I'm learning and figuring it out. I would open the bracket and VS Code conveniently shows me the help information about all the parameters. So I would try to read this to understand exactly what is going on. Uh, and for example, how any or all, uh, Default is any determine if a row or column is removed from the data mode when we have at least one NA or all NA. So I think any is what works. And if I don't say that, that is the default. So that's what is going to be. You know, we just run this and then it's going to drop that. And now it has 134 rows by four columns. And as you can see, the hotels thing is gone. While this is good, this is not really an ideal situation. Many times you may want to retain this data, but instead of having it here, I want to move it to a separate column here. So this is where you need to understand a little bit more about manipulating the data frames. Uh, again, Pandas offers many ways to do this. Uh, we'll understand some of the basics first so that you can get familiarity with this. Again, I want to put a warning here that I am also a learner of pandas. I'm just figuring out these things as we as I go along. So whatever method or technique that I'm showing may not be the optimal or the best way of doing this. But you know, we are all learning. To understand this concept, let's first add a column which is twice the room number. Again, that would be a meaningless type of a column, but it will give you an idea of how such things can be added. So it's a simple process of df square brackets and then the new column name. I'm going to call this as 2x room and this is equal to df of square brackets uh, room number and then twice 2. That's pretty much it. We will now have a column called dx df2x room. I can see this 
And when I run this, I'll have this extra column here to X room. Again, our NAN appears here. This is because uh, when we drop, it does generate a new data frame, but that just gets printed on the screen. We are not updating the dropped room number into the data frame. To update it, you would need to use df dot drop na and then in place is equal to true now i don't want to do this because we do need to treat the data and reuse the hotels information as a new column so this is why i didn't do that but if you use the in place option then it will update the data frame and create the new one another way of doing this is you can simply say df drop na and then df2 is equal to df dot drop na what this will do is it will create a new data frame which doesn't have the na option and then we can just see df2.head and that will show you new data frame df2 which doesn't have those na rows anyhow now that we understand some of the basics let's go ahead and make a column that will have this value added as a separate column to do this we will first need to understand what these values are. These are NAN values and internally we can access them using the NA related functions. So for example, I want this value every time one of these columns has NAN. So to know if one of these columns is NAN, I can use, for example, DF and then any column, I'm just going to go with room number because it will consistently have a value or NAN. So room number is NA. Now is NA is going to be a bunch of true or false values and this will produce a data frame that is a single column data frame that has true or false values. So you can see that here it will be false, false, false and then true for the fourth row because uh, the fourth one is hotels and it is NA and here right so this is the basic approach and what we will now need to do is if this is false then we don't need to do anything if it is true then we want the corresponding value to be added as a new column we'll create a variable called mask and then store df room number is na so the mask will contain the true or false values next up we will say df and then text value this is our new column that we are going to create is equal to so this is where the np module that we brought in is helpful so np dot where this is a function that that is part of the np or the numpy library uh, and you can specify the condition so the condition is mask and then based on the mask true value false value is what we need to provide so it's kind of like a if formula but it goes in a loop for each value in the mask it will apply the conditions so np where of mask and then if it is true i want df of the date and if it is false blanks and let's just print the df here uh, we can see how that looks so we will have either hotels or all these values as blanks now while the blank value is all right it does kind of open up a problem for us down the line uh, so ideally what i want is instead of leaving them as blank i want them to be a n a value so here i'm just gonna change my code to np.nan so this is how you can kind of access the NAN variable and then print that there. You might think, how does Chandu really know all of these things? Well, I didn't really know any of these things yesterday, but as I was trying to solve this problem, I went and searched online and read up on the Pandas website, as well as went through many, many Stack Overflow articles and posts to kind of understand how to solve this problem. So now when I run this, I can see my DF has a text value column that would be either the value or the NAN depending on what it is. Now wherever this is NAN, I want to take this value and fill it up in that direction. So this is called filling it up uh, and you can do that using the fill functions that are available in the data frames or pandas. So we will say df of uh, 
text value fill na or fill na you can specify the parameters so you can see that uh, there are different types of uh, filling methods uh, that are available b fill pad f fill etc so b fill will go and fill in the back so it will kind of go in this direction f fill will fill in the forward direction so we need the b fill method because we need to take the hotels and then fill it up there so method um, equals b fill that will basically backfill the values and you now have hotels all the way through again this is i don't think it is does uh, does that in in place so if i try to uh, add another code block and then print the df we will still have nan values here so we need to be doing this in place so here we will say df uh, text value fill na method is equal to b fill in place is equal to true so this would basically update the existing data frame text value column uh, and then let's just run this uh, df again and you can see that the values are now reused this is perfect at this point if i now drop all these nan values our data frame would be clean so we'll just say df dot drop na uh, in place is equal to true and here is our final data frame our clean data is now ready and i can use this for doing some analysis like for example i can see uh, value counts by text value or something else so for example i can say df dot value counts uh, I'm not even sure if this is the correct way of doing this, but we'll just say text value. Yeah, and then it'll give you how many times each of the booking sites or the booking methods have been used to make the bookings. Pandas also has a, a simple plotting library. So if you want to create a plot, you can make this. This is something that I have not tried. I only read the examples. So I'm going to try this one out. DF3 uh, is equal to so we make a new data frame that has these value counts and then df3 dot uh, plot so this will create uh, hopefully a plot that shows how many bookings are there i think the default is a line so this is showing me a line probably we could use a bar chart here this is something that i need to learn so i leave that to you as homework why don't you learn a little bit more about the python programming itself here is a long video that goes into greater detail about python on the other hand, you can also solve these kind of problems using Power Query in Excel and Power BI. And that requires writing no lines of code at all. So check out this video for that. I'll catch you in one of these two places. Bye.